about this. Let's take a look around. And we see we have a shortage going on. Oh yeah, we got a shortage of our young people. And you cannot build a serious opposition to this system without young people. I'm just trying to put something on your mind. A problem to be solved. Right now I'd like to bring on Jeff. Come on, Jeff. I've known Jeff Macklin a number of years. He's been involved in the anti-war movement, the movement to free Mumia, and is the leader of a group called Socialist Action. Jeff? Thanks, Gerald. Thank you for the Labor Action Committee to Free Mumia for calling this meeting. Thank everybody for coming. But know this, Mumia Abu Jamal is symbolic of everything this rotten racist system has perpetrated on all oppressed people and on all working people. The United States is number one in the world for a gulag with seven million people under the jurisdiction of the so-called criminal justice system. It has the largest prison population in the world, number one. It has the largest number of people on death row in the world, number one. This is racist America personified. And Mumia Abu-Jabal has been the symbol of opposition to every aspect of this system. They have broken every single law in the books to violate his constitutional rights to a fair trial. They excluded blacks from the jury pool. They denied all of our appeals by the racist assistant Attorney General Ron Castile. A couple of hours ago, I spoke to Judith Ritter, who is one of Mumia's legal team, and she told me that they're waiting now for the Pennsylvania authorities to release the information that will allow them to open up appeal that can lead to Mumia's freedom. We don't expect miracles from any judge in this criminal injustice system. But we have learned something. Mumia is alive today because we have been in the streets, because we have attacked this government's racist policies, because we have united every element possible in mass mobilizations, in labor mobilizations, in strikes, in student movements, in teach-ins for 35 years. The mobilization to free Mumia Abu Jamal, of which I'm the director, was the founder of the Mumia movement in the Bay Area. Last week I attended in the South Richmond, Virginia, the United National Anti-War Coalition Convention, which defended Mumia Abu Jamal and continued his struggle for freedom. 300 people attended, and equally important, that group unanimously said, U.S. out of Syria, imperialism out of Syria, self-determination for the Syrian people, for all oppressed people, no U.S. intervention in Syria or in any other country in the world. Keep your dirty imperialist hands off the right of oppressed people to determine their own future. Now let me tell you this, I believe that we are on the verge of a new movement, a movement where the gap between the massive anger, frustration, and hatred that the working class in general feel for this rotten capitalist system on the one hand, and they're yet to go into the streets in massive numbers to challenge this system on the other. And as that gap closes, organizations like ours, like yours, will play, however modest they are today, a key role in unifying every single struggle into a giant struggle to challenge the source of racism, poverty, unemployment, endless war, sexism, homosexuality, and all the other evils that are inherent in this predatory system. Bring Mumia home now. Free Mumia. Let's build the united effort in the streets and everywhere else in society to make sure that he is here with us again. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Let's hear it for him. Come on now. Because you know what? There will be no freedom for me or any, any other political prisoner unless we find unity in our own ranks. 
It's 8 to 80, blind, crippler, crazy. We ain't joking. We have to unite. We have to find a way to get the unions involved, the women's organizations, our youth, all involved. Because this attack on Mumia represents a couple of things. One, it's a vendetta against opponents of capitalism, as the brother pointed out earlier. Remember, Simone said we got Rap Brown, Jamin El Amin, Jamil Alamin, excuse me, presently incarcerated. Well, yeah, I don't know if y'all remember Rap Brown. I guess, yeah, I said yes. <laughs> burn, baby, burn. That's right. A leader of SNCC, revolutionary agitator all over the United States. They had him in their sights for decades before they got him. And I'm going to tell you the day they decided to get Mumia, they hated him when he exposed police brutality. But that one step too far was when he talks about the Powell Street Commune of MOVE was attacked by 600 police. Now this is, I'm sorry, I'm gonna just say it the way I'm gonna say it. I mean, cause sometimes racism deranges your mind. And these racist police are sick. They formed a circular firing squad around MOVE. And then they, somebody said, I heard a shot. And they just got to shooting in a circular firing squad. They surrounded Powelton in a circle and they shoot. Well, what do you think happened? They got to shooting each other. They shot six cops. One of them died and some fire people died. Now, I know y'all, look it up. Look it up. I don't, you ain't got to believe me. And then you come back and say, yeah, I'm going to check out OG, man. He's on it. That's right. They a circular firing squad, they got to shooting each other. And then Mumia went to the press conference afterwards and was the only journalist to challenge Rizzo and say, what kind of what kind of police work is that? Oh boy, Rizzo turned to him and said, and I, I remember this because this is when you knew they wanted to get him. He said, you know what? He said, I'm tired of your head. I'm gonna tell you what. People read what you say and believe it. He said, there's going to come a time when we're going to make you accountable for what you say publicly. We need, right now, everybody to get on board with this police action. He was talking directly to Mumia Abu-Jamal. Within months, Mumia was in prison. Did you hear me? That's actually happened. All right. So right now, we, we got a struggle, a black liberation struggle. Now we also have a struggle with the trade unions. And there are those of us who believe that the job of revolutionaries is to take the trade unions to a higher level politically, programmatically, consciously. Hard work. Because everybody that joins a union doesn't necessarily sign up to change. They want some change, all right? So it's hard work to stay with that work for decades. It's not easy. The brother we gonna bring up now, come on up here, Jack.